Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Woodpecker's Deep Dive. My name is Jeff Ferris. Welcome to my shop. Today, we're going to take a closer look at Woodpecker's new shelf pin and drawer slide template. We're going to see how it works, and I'm going to work with it on a project that I have coming up for a new piece of furniture I want for the house. All right, let's get started. Woodpecker's shelf pin and drawer slide template is all about choices. There's a whole bunch of them. Let's start out by taking a look at the spacing. On this side, the holes are 32 millimeters apart, and on this side, they're one inch apart. They're all three eighths of an inch, and that gives us two different ways that we can guide our drill in there. We can do this with a drill bit that is self-centering. See, it fits right in that hole. Same one fits in that hole. You can get this in two different sizes. You can get it in quarter inch and five millimeter. So typically what you would use is the five millimeter side on the 32 millimeter side and the quarter inch one on the one inch side. But nothing says that you can't use the five millimeter with the one inch spacing. If you happen to have a whole bunch of five millimeter shelf pins, and you want them closer together than 32 millimeters, there's no reason not to set it up like this. So continuing the theme of a whole bunch of choices, besides using that self-serving grill bit, we can also use a router template guide bushing. Now this is 3 eighths of an inch outside, and you can use either a quarter inch or five millimeter drill bit inside that. And for even more choices, you can use the new shelf pin and drawer slide template for both new construction, or if you want to put adjustable shelves in a cabinet that's already done, it'll work inside a finished cabinet too. Most of this is aimed at setting up shelf pins. We can also turn it 90 degrees, and now you can drill for drawer slides. Okay, for today's project, let's start narrowing down some of those choices. Uh, let's first talk about metric versus inch. Uh, in the metric, shelf pins. There are lots of styles available. One of the things I like about metric is these little guys right here, and that is a screw that is specifically made for working in plywood, and it is perfect for installing drawer slides. It is a very, very coarse thread, and it fits a five millimeter hole perfectly. So if you're putting in drawer slides, this is the piece of hardware you want to use right here. And this is a real simple five millimeter shelf pin. So the metric hardware, real simple to use. There's lots of choices out there. Uh, and we have lots of different styles on those five millimeter pins. But there are even more choices on the quarter inch pins. Quarter inch shelf pins have been around on in US uh, cabinet making for years and years and years. And there are dozens and dozens and dozens of styles. So if you're matching existing cabinets, you probably want to go with quarter inch. If you're doing something new, that's when you might want to try out the metric hardware. Now today, I'm working on a new piece of furniture. Uh, it's a little shelf unit that I'm building for our sunroom. Uh, and it's new construction. I've already got some five millimeter shelf pins. So I'm going to use metric spacing with metric hardware. But I don't know exactly what my cabinet looks like yet. So let's go over to the chalkboard and take a quick look at where I am in the design process. Now I know most YouTube sensation woodworkers are probably gonna laugh at me for using a chalkboard instead of SketchUp, but this is as close to SketchUp as I can get. Uh, so let's take a look. I've got some notes here, and the space where I'm gonna fit this cabinet I've got about 28 inches for width. Uh, I measured it and I want it about 36 tall. And it's going to be 14 inches deep. So my two sides. We're going to be 14 wide and 36 long. Now, when you think about 
the way that shelf pins normally get used. Everybody tends to drill this all the way from the bottom, all the way to the top. But who's gonna want a shelf one or two inches above the base of the cabinet? Just isn't gonna get used. So I'm gonna start, I think, about seven inches up with my first shelf pin. And then we'll put those on 32 millimeter centers. Same thing at the other end. Nobody's gonna want a shelf five or six inches down from the top. So we'll stop again about seven inches down. And those are rough measurements. I don't have to be exactly seven on those. I just want to start and stop my shelf pin holes about seven inches from the bottom and about seven inches from the top. Now I'm gonna put a top on this, but I don't know what that top looks like yet. I'm gonna put a base on it, but again, I haven't completely decided what that base is gonna look like. So if I make these sides about, I know that I'm gonna gain at least three or four inches here, about an inch here. So I've got my stop, uh, my sides cut for a 36 overall, I've got those sides cut at 34 inches. Might cut them down a little bit, might not. We'll probably leave them right about 34. Uh, and then I've got my 14 inch width. That's pretty well nailed, I'm not gonna change that. So I've got these two sides pre-cut. We're ready to go. We're gonna drill the holes for the shelf pins in both sides. So the first step is to set up my router to bore the holes. So this is a special adapter in the plate made to accept the template guide bushings. I'm going to take that out and we're going to put our template guide bushing in the holder. Drop that in there and we'll bring our ring on the back side. And lock it up. Now that's a pretty tight fit there. When we drop that in, there's some adjustment so that we can get that perfectly centered. If you buy the complete deluxe kit with the white side template guide, you get a centering device. Now our centering device is a pin that is a quarter inch diameter here to fit in the uh, collet of the chuck. And then this side that's a little bit larger, that is the inside dimension of the guide bushing. So we're gonna drop this into the collet and lock it up. Now I'll depress that a little bit and lock it. We'll drop that over the pin, align the holes, and now we know that everything is centered up. So now we're gonna take the centering pin out and replace it with a router bit. Now there is one in the deluxe kit, uh, but it's brand new and I've already got a five millimeter that I've used. So I'm gonna use my old five millimeter bit. So before I bring out my expensive veneered red oak plywood, I'm going to do a couple of sample cuts on a piece of scrap just to make sure I've got everything lined up right. So we have the template. I'm on the 32 millimeter side. I have these two clips popped in here. Just snap in right here and those align you to the edge of the material which is 37 millimeters from the edge to the center of your line of holes. I'm going to put this pin right in here and that's going to set me up 37 millimeters from the end of the stock. Just drop it down like that, bring it up until the pin hits and the two tabs hit. Now you're 37 millimeters from the edge and 37 millimeters from the end. Now I'm just gonna throw a simple F clamp on here so everything stays in place while we're working. So one more thing before we start drilling, we need to set our depth of cut so that we don't plunge too far into our stock. 
Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is with this in one of the holes, we're gonna press it down until we hit the stock. All right, so that's our zero point. I'm gonna lock the plunge for the moment. Then we're gonna push this down and we're gonna push our plunger against the stop. And that is at our zero point. Now that's zero, we wanna set this up for an eight millimeter cut. The shelf pins are seven millimeters long. We want them to have a little bit of room for adjustment or if there's uh, uh, some sawdust down at the bottom of the hole. So we're gonna make it eight millimeters deep. So I'm just gonna pick this up. I'm gonna take an eight millimeter step block, put it in there. Now we'll lock it up. And now that is a perfect eight millimeters between where we are now and the bottom of the hole. So now let's make just a couple of test cuts to make sure everything is running just the way we want it to. So let's take a look. And a perfect fit on our shelf pins. Now that's the way I prefer to drill these holes is uh, with the router. Uh, but just so that you have an idea of the difference in the workflow, uh, I'm gonna drill a couple with a drill bit, uh, the self-centering drill bit, uh, to show you that. Uh, everything else is the same. Obviously, we are lined up the same. We're still clamped down. But with the self-centering drill bit, we're gonna drop that in the hole, line it up. And those holes are just as nice. So now we're ready to bring out the $100 a sheet red oak plywood. Uh, and I've got this pre-cut to size, and I have this piece of tape telling me that this is the bottom and this is the inside. This is the side where we want to drill the holes. And we're going to take our template, line it up just like we did on our scrap piece. I remember I said I wanted to start seven inches up from the bottom and stop seven inches down from the top. So what I'm gonna do is take a rule and put it on here. And so that seven, we'll skip a little bit and we'll say that this is the first hole that we're gonna use. Now from the other end, we're gonna wanna do the same thing and that will be when we come over and do this corner, we need that at the same mark. So that's gonna be this one. So those are the ones where we're starting from, this is from the left and this is from the right. I'm using a dry erase marker. When I'm through, that'll just wipe off for the next project. We won't have those marks confusing us. Okay, so we're starting on our blue mark. Drop that in and just start punching holes. Now I need to shift this down and keep the, t the pattern going. So I'll show you how to do that. We're gonna take the index pen that we had used to keep us off of the bottom edge. We're now gonna take that out. We're gonna find one of our holes and we're going to drop that into the hole. Then we have three of those. We'll just use two of them, that's all we need. We'll drop that one in right there. We got our edge guide still in place. That sets up our pattern. Now we need to figure out where we're gonna stop. So these are our start points, but we need a stop point too. So the last one that we want to drill is this one right here. I need to make that mark big enough that I can see it. And I need to move this one back a couple so that I have room to get on the one where I want to start. There we go. Now we're ready to go.
So now we need to be sure that we start from the bottom again. We don't want to just uh, flip this piece and start from this end. We'll end up with our hole spacing offset. We have to be sure that we start from the bottom, which means that we're going to take the jig off, turn it around, and turn the board around. So now we want to come down, put our index pin in here, bring our tabs against the edge of the stock, and our pin against the bottom, and now we have exactly the same registration as we did on the other side. And my stop line this time is this one right here. Two sets of holes perfectly matched to each other, exactly the same distance from both edges, all ready for our cabinet to go together. So uh, before next week's show, I'll do the other side of this cabinet and hopefully I'll get some inspiration on what I'm gonna do with the rest of the base. But over the next several weeks, this project is gonna continue and whenever we can, we're gonna include the steps in our deep dives. Hey, if you enjoyed the show today, be sure and give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. That way you'll know about every one of our great videos right when they come out. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Deep Dive.